Welcome back to Shed Wars. I know it's been a while, but I do have an excuse. I had a seizure on the 10th, another one on the 19th. Well, I've recovered from the last one. July hasn't been very good to me. Today, I'm feeling healthy, and we're going to continue with some of this now. I've got a little project to do. Let's start with taking a look at our uh, Shed Wars garden. Tomatoes, as I said in the last uh, videos, they're coming along fine. They haven't put out any flowers yet. Um, so I'm going to get some seed heads off this before the growing season is out. You can see our beans are producing. You get to see what I can do with the uh, dill seed. These other types of lettuce are coming along nicely, eh? Look at that red one over there, isn't that beautiful? And a nice big uh, Swiss chard coming along there. I'm trying to figure out the best places to put cauliflower. So as you can see, that this cauliflower just didn't do anything. However, these in the main garden, they're growing excellent. This soil, I've got it to the state it has a very deep layer of organic matter. Plus, of course, it's mulched with organic matter. It's pretty much a matter of all the dry weather. Um, those peas are starting to come up. I think this is a lovely way to do a trellis. Inexpensive trellis that you can just put together, grow your peas on. Most sunflowers people around here, they start them inside and they transplant them out. Black oil sunflowers, you can just direct sow a couple of weeks before your last frost. And in my experience, you get a good crop of sunflowers from your black oil sunflower seed. On top of that, of course, those are the seeds that you get mostly in uh, bird feed is black oil. And so you can buy a bag of bird feed, plant the sunflowers, and then put the rest of the seeds in your uh, bird feeder. There's going to be a huge burst of flowers on this once it, uh, they open. There's a whole bunch of buds there. It would be nice if it was easy to see the screen on this camera, but it's not, so I'm going to do my best. Remember, we planted red beets and sugar beets. So, here are the red beets. And if I pan up, you will see a line of red beets all the way along. And over here, starting right here, you see sugar beets. Now there will be a wider space because, well, you put a wider space in sugar beets. And there is one right over by the post over there, the sign. What you didn't see me plant are these that's turnip purple top white globe I have two rows there and I think they'll be should be right uh, ready the middle of September I 
I was going through my records, see what seeds I got, and uh, through my research records in Excel, and this is what I come up with. I have five types of cr uh, seeds that I can plant now, and according to my records of the last two years, they should be mature about the last of September, which is our first frost. But most of these will grow well into October, up to the first of November probably. There is arugula, spinach, long-standing Bloomsdale, the white scallop squash, cabbage, and baby choy, and kohlrabi, early white Vienna. Something killed my kohlrabi. So I'm going to try again. The ideal I've got is that maybe starting them last of July, I am past the um, bout of cabbage moth and harlequin bug. And maybe they will grow just perfectly fine. The soil now will be as warm as it's going to get and come second week of August it'll be starting to cool down and the temperature should be good for growing these things. Now let's decide. We're finding that the cabbage and the lettuce are growing better in a partial shade environment. So, cabbage baby choy and crabby early white Vienna. The cabbage says thin to 16 inches. And the crabby, it's six inches. So, what I think is a good idea, put a row of cabbage baby choy right by the edge. Right here. And then we are going close to the tomatoes. And we will plant a row of kohlrabi here. And when I go to thin them, I will take out this block. I'll have a kohlrabi here, one here and one here, probably when I'm done, which will be over six inches, but that's the area that I have. So this is the kohlrabi. And like I said, with the soil being warmer now, maybe we'll get some fairly good germination with these things. And then the weather will cool down to their preferred temperature. And then right by the edge, like I said, I'll put in a row of cabbage. I'm doing this fairly, fairly thinly because I don't want plants coming up tight together. It makes it easier to thin them out when you're doing them. When you plant thinly, the uh, thinning of the plants will be easier. And then just give them a little cover. And Now we're experimenting with something new in Newfoundland because traditionally people just, they planted the traditional potatoes, turnip, and carrot 
once in the spring and then harvested in the fall. There was no more planting. Now we are starting to experiment with having two plantings during a growing season. One for the longer growing plants you plant early in the spring and uh, one for that you can plant with the soil warm and they'll grow into the fall. Excuse the noise of the lawnmower in the background. We've had a few days of rain now and uh, this is our first sunny period. This is Saturday as well so my neighbor wants to get his lawn mowed before tomorrow which is Sunday. But you should hear me fine over that anyway. So we planted the cabbage in the karate, okay? Leave that. You remember I planted cucumbers along here. It was a Morton early. And I thought there was three growing, but right now I can only find two and they're right down the other end. We'll watch those to see how they grow. And we're also going to put in now another squash type plant when I can find it. Yes, it's the white scallop squash. If you go back in my videos, I grew this one last year up on the west side of the main garden. So we're going to see how well these germinate in our midsummer. And I put the cucumbers along here. And I'm going to just put them in individually. Along in a line here. See what comes up. And if too many comes up, we are just in the moat. The soil is really warm. There's two greens plants that I found that if you want a reseeding annual that is a salad green, these are the best. Arugula and spinach. They'll come back year after year if you let them go to seed. Now, we're planting these last of July, so we probably won't get seed heads off of these. If I had planted them in the spring, they would grow up and like lettuce, they would have went to seed um, sometime around now. But they'll self-seed and then next year it's only a matter of pulling up the ones that you don't want to grow. Now that's our scallops. We'll put a row of spinach right here. Spinach is a fairly large plant. But the plant spacing is only four inches. So I think they grow up tall and skinny. Can't quite remember now. And apparently, this packet I never did open. Oh, this is the arugula one. Let's try spinach. I knew I had something wrong there. The spacing is 10 inches because they are a fairly large plant. It suggests to plant the seeds one every inch and then thin them out later.
days to sprout is 7 to 21 because it's the warmest period and if I keep this ground moist they should sprout in about a week arugula is a little smaller that's the one that uh, plant spacing is four inches <clears throat> but they grow something like leaf lettuce and so we'll put a row of arugula here and who knows next year we might have just spinach and arugula in this uh, section now these are a little bit smaller than the turnip rutabaga and seeds and that so they're going to be a little more difficult to actually get them thinly spaced but I'm doing okay that's our Newfoundland experiment with growing what you guys on the uh, mainland or in the US where you've got longer growing seasons we call a fall garden there's the two cucumber plants that are growing I had planned to uh, do another project namely starting on the pond that's just back right there but I had tool problems so it's gonna to have to wait till next week now I hope you enjoyed the little update here and uh, hope you'll click the like button for me check out the other Shed Wars collaborators and I'll see you in the next video